Hello, this video will demonstrate how to apply for a participatory action research grant and then how to navigate the application form once you're within the system. If after watching this video you're still experiencing technical difficulties, then we have a variety of support options available to you. You can send an email message to a dedicated inbox and we'll respond to the messages in the order we receive them. Or you can call this number and ask to speak to a member of the FOI team and we'll try to shoot, uh, troubleshoot your issue on the spot. Or you can log into one of our scheduled support uh, Skype-based webinars that we'll be hosting throughout the month. During these webinars, we can share our screen with you to help show you uh, how to troubleshoot the issue that you're, experience, uh, you're experiencing. So the first step to apply for a grant is to use the email address that you registered with and then enter your password. And if you haven't submitted an application form yet, you're taken immediately to the list of open program calls. Once you submit an application form and then log back into the system, you'll be taken to a different home screen. To get back to the list of uh, open applications, simply click on this apply menu icon and the list will reappear. So here you see the five um, program calls that are currently accepting applications. They're sorted by call name, the program and subprogram they're associated with, whether it's a one or two stage application process, and when the deadlines are that are associated with each of the calls. You'll see here that there are one, two participatory action research calls uh, currently accepting proposals. I'm going to use the convene grant uh, uh, as the demonstration, uh, the uh, application process at the beginning is exactly the same regardless of which participatory action research grant you apply for. So when you hit apply now, the first screen you're taken to is a confirmation that the project that you're submitting is a partnership between a uh, uh, organization recognized for undertaking research in the province of BC, as well as a community organization that represents people with the lived experience of the issue that's under investigation. There is a confirmation statement that you'll want to read, and then if you can confirm agreement to the confirmation statement, then click on I confirm and save and continue to the second step. The second step is to identify the organizations that will be partnering on this uh, research proposal. The applicant, at least one of the organizations must be a qualified donee. And if only one of the organizations is a qualified donee, then they must be the applicant organization. Vancouver Foundation can only uh, grant to qualified donees because we're a charitable foundation. If you've applied on behalf of the applicant organization before, then click yes, and that organization's name may appear in this drop-down list. We haven't migrated many of the past associations yet, and so it's unlikely or it's most likely that nothing will appear here. And if that's the case, then select no, and then you're presented with a list of qualified donees. The most common type of qualified donee to apply for a grant is a registered charity. However, these other types of qualified donees are equally eligible to apply and submit a grant proposal. If you're unclear what type of qualified donee you are, then we've included a link to the Canada Revenue Agency where they maintain their lists and you can search for your organization there. If you're a registered charity, then uh, select that and you're presented with this box whether you can uh, either begin typing the organization's name or by far the easiest way to locate your organization is to begin typing in your registered charitable number and you'll see as i do that that the system narrows down the uh, entries to the organization that meets uh, this number and i can select it if you're um, if you don't know what your registered charity number is, then you can start um, uh, searching by name. 
there are more than thirteen thousand organizations in our database and so i would encourage you to use the most unique part of your organization's legal name in order to try to find it if you're the you'll need to know what order your legal name and it is in as well if you're the bc social innovation organization and you type in the social innovation organization of bc nothing will come up also you should be aware that we've stripped the periods out of most of the acronyms and abbreviations that appear in the cre's listings and so if your organization name has any variation of bc in it it will only appear in our database as bc and if your organization has oopsie i'm really not doing this well So a well-known organization in Vancouver is Success. It has periods in its acronym, but you'll see as I type this in, nothing comes up. But as soon as I type success as one word, um, and it doesn't need to be uh, all capital letters, the system will um, sort through the list of organizations and return the ones that uh, have success uh, in them. We've uploaded all of the registered charities operating within BC and the registered charities outside of BC that have submitted an application to us since 2015. If you cannot find your organization in the list, then you can add a new registered charity by clicking on this button. You're taken to a screen that you can do uh, really nothing on. Um, click this search CRA database button and then enter as much information as you know about the organization you're interested in. When you search the list of registered charities that contains the information that you've uh, entered into the form is returned here. And you'll see that there's lots of organizations uh, that have international in their legal name. The list is sorted by registration number, but you can resort the list by clicking on any of the header columns here. The organization, oh, I should mention that if you navigate off of this window by any chance and you see that they've disappeared, most web browsers let you click on their icon in the uh, taskbar and to bring the windows back up. So I will do that. And the organization that I am interested in showing you is this one here. If you're unclear if there was more than one CUSO International on this list, and that's quite common for church names, um, then you can click on this view details for a window with some additional information to pop up. Uh, and if this is in fact the information that uh, you want to apply against, you can click select here, or you can close the window and continue to browse the list. I'm going to select the information um, or the organization. It'll fill out the form. When I submit it, I get this error message saying that the organization is in fact already within our system. And so if that's the case, I would encourage you to jot down this registration number. And then when you go back here to enter the, instead of entering the name, enter the registration number. And that way the organization record will come up for sure. So I'm just going to go back here and go back and select an organization that I know is not. I'm really having a lot of trouble typing today. International and I'm going to select this one here. It fills in the form. I hit submit and it says the organization has been successfully added. So when I close this window and return here and I type in the name, um, it should appear in the list momentarily. As a, there it is. I 
can select it um, and then move on. This isn't the information I want to use to um, actually demonstrate the application form with, so I will select that one instead. I'm going to make this community organization the applicant organization, and then for the partnering organization, you need to identify whether or not they're also a qualified donee. Uh, if they're not, select no, and then start typing in to see if they happen to be in our database already. If they're not, then you'll want to add a new organization, and when you proceed to the application form, you can enter their details there. I just so happen to have a, re whoops, a research organization already configured, and so I've selected my two organizations, I save and continue to the application form. Here we're presented with the application form and regardless of what type of grant you uh, apply to, the application form is always laid out the same way. So at the top of the form you see some basic information about the organization that applied, the program call um, the application relates to, more information may appear here as you progress through the application process. I logged in as the demo uh, applicant, and so I'm listed here as the primary author. Here on the right-hand side, any contacts that are currently associated with a community organization will be listed here, and any collaborators that I've set up to work with me on this application form are also listed here. There's a separate video to show you how to do that. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see the uh, different tabs that um, have different parts of the application form that you'll need to fill out. You can navigate to each section of the form without completing the information in the previous section. At the bottom of the form, you'll see these four action buttons. If you've made an error and these aren't the organizations you want to submit the application form, then you can press this button to return to the previous process to select the applications. You can save your work at any time and log out. And then when you log back in, you'll see this application listed as one of your draft applications um, in the My Applications uh, section. Uh, here it is here. And so when I open it up, uh, I'm returned uh, into the application form. When you've finished submitting the application, you'll hit the Validate and Submit button. And if there are any errors on the form, you'll be presented with a list of them. You can click on uh, most of the error messages that are returned and uh, be taken to the exact point in the application form where the error occurs and be presented with the message that helps you understand why there's an error. You'll need to fix all of the errors in your application form before the system will allow you to submit an application. The final button is this one, and it does exactly what it says it does. So if you press it, it will delete your proposal. And if you uh, select this button in error, then give us a call and we can reinstate your uh, application so that you can continue to work on it. That's it for this video. There are other videos that will show you how to fill out the narrative sections of the application form, including how to set up your research team and project budget. I hope you found this video informative. If you continue to experience uh, technical difficulties with the application form, it is a new system. I am expecting there will be some hiccups and bumps along the way. Please use one of the support options available to you. And uh, thanks for watching this video and I look forward to uh, reviewing your submitted proposal.